It's another episode of the of Wearable Today. My name is Jeffrey Powers, and welcome to a jam-packed golf episode where we're going to show you the best way to figure out your swing. We're going to do that, and we're also going to talk about Google Glass version three, not version two, but version three. Uh, what we're what we're expecting from it, what you should see in Google Glass uh, third generation. Uh, we've also got a lot of Apple Watch. We've got a uh, we've got something that'll detect your farts. It's on the show. So watch the show because you are watching Wearable Today. Hey, everybody. Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine Thing Magazine, Put in the Geek, and uh, over here at Wearable Today. And we're here for another week of uh, learning a little bit about wearable technology, seeing some cool stuff and, and all that other good stuff. And now from a new remote location. It's my co-host in crime, co-hosts in crime, excuse me, Mr. Luke Wallace and Bernie. Hey, Jeff. Hi. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're looking for me, I am now at this new fancy location. Uh, na, 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 na. Luke and, Cave. Yep, it's, it's the Luke Cave, and uh, I'll be broadcasting from here or somewhere else. Uh, every time I'm on the show. So uh, if you're looking for me on Twitter, it's Luke Luca. That's L-U-K-E-L-U-C-A. Uh, or Luke at wearabletoday.com. Or you can email Bertie at Bertie at wearabletoday.com. It's spelled here in the show, B-I-R-D-I-E at wearabletoday.com. It's too bad that Bertie is not a Robin because then you could be Luke Man and Robin. You know, that is you know, maybe... What kind maybe, of bird is, is Bertie? Birdie is a conure parrot. Um, conure parrot? Just so yeah, the, a um, there's kind of oh. a subspecies uh, called a sun conure that people are familiar with, which is uh, red and yellow, uh, very bright. Um, but actually, Birdie is a gray-cheeked conure because okay. you can see she's got a gray-cheeked conure. So. Yeah. We had a little bit of skip there, so hopefully uh, that didn't affect anything. You can still hear me, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I can totally hear you. So yeah. So great it, you can't you can't say Luke Man and Gray Kanye, Birdie. Yeah, Kanye Ka West. Kanye no. West Birdie. Kanye West Birdie or something like that. Anyway, so yeah, we'll have to work on that. We'll work yeah, on we'll that figure we'll figure name. out a uh, stage name for Birdie. So in the meantime, let's get into the news with Bird News Little Arms. <sighs> So, up first, Microsoft has brought OneDrive to the Apple Watch. Yes, that's right. Microsoft has an Apple Watch app. The company rolled out an update to their iOS app for OneDrive so that you can view photos that are saved in OneDrive on your wrist. They say the Android version will be out shortly for Android Wear devices. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't play that perfectly. Did, did you? Yeah, oh, yeah, you did. Never mind. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> no, never mind, never mind. Next up, uh, IK, our friends at IK Multimedia have come out with the Ultra Tuner, which is uh, basically iOS tuner for Apple Watch. Uh, you uh, will set up your iPhone or iPad with the iRig connector and uh, then pair the watch using the Watch Kit extension app. You'll be able to tune your guitar by watching your wrists instead of uh, holding your phone if you don't have one of those little clasps to hold the phone up while you're tuning up your guitar. Uh, so it's an app. You can get it, and I believe you can get it now over at uh, over on the Apple Store. Do you need to carry important, vital information with you? Well, the Epic ID USB band is one of the first emergency bands being brought to the market. The USB flash drive is PC and Mac compatible and can carry important information like blood type, allergies, medications, and more. The band is waterproof and has a stainless steel clasp to, to keep it from falling off. That's the Epic ID Emergency Medical ID Wristband. Uh, it has an MSRP of $34.95. It's available now. And available now. <laughs> at all your <laughs> Available now at Walgreens and CVS. There you go. And okay. Rite Aid. <laughs> And left aid, and up aid, and down aid, <laughs> and Kool Aid. Oh yeah! Anyway, <laughs> love that guy. He is a great guy. Yeah. Uh, you can add. add, add uh, where are we? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not this one. Uh, is it? Feel real. Oh, yeah. You can add smell to your virtual. I was, I was thinking it was, it was another smell o vision. You can add smell to your virtual reality experience. We actually have two articles that talk about smelling. So, anyway, you can add smell to your virtual reality experience. Feel real is a device you can attach to your Oculus Rift, and it allows to bring scent into the device as opposed to the other one, which is going to bring. Anyway, uh, we won't talk. We'll talk about that later. So the device contains an odor generator, um, and a water mist valve and microphone with it, and it attaches underneath the Oculus Rift. Uh, the attachment gives you different s- smellscapes, including fire, ocean, jungle, grass, flowers, metal, and a mysterious powder scent cartridge. Um, I didn't see a price on that over there, but if you want to check out more, we got the link over at geek.com, so you can go over there and take a look at that from there. So, back on our March 23rd show, we talked about Tog Heuer working with Google to come up with a smartwatch powered by Android Wear. Well, we've now seen some more details released on that, and the price point has been announced. It will be starting at $1,400, which is much below the Apple Watch high-end device, but uh, will still provide a premium feel running Android Wear. The device is expected to launch around November. There's not, they haven't announced a specific date yet, but the $1,400 Tog Heuer app will, um, will be running Android Wear and launching in November. There you go. And, uh, okay, so that does bring us to the next section of the show, what? and that is what? the Fund Me section. Don't we need to complete the – don't we need to – No, no, no. I want to do the growl again. And now you'll do the growl. Don't worry. So. All right. Okay, that, that was big news, little arms. <laughs> And wants to growl, and he, and he, and he messed it up. He, he yeah, I know. Growled I did before the growl happened. Yeah, so. well, All right, let's move on. Before, here so. we go. Let's let's move on to fund me here. We're uh, we talk about kickstarters and stuff like that. And guess what? <laughs> they make they make wearables for everything. <laughs> Who's ready for a wearable that can smell your farts? Well, not really smell your farts, but it, it is the CH4, <laughs> and it can do just that. It's a device that. That doesn't break down into uh, doesn't break down the what type of gas comes out and my cords are hold on a second here stupid cords are getting jostled anyway uh, it's it doesn't break down the type of gas that's that's coming out it just detects whether you let one out Um, because the average person farts about 13 times a day if you're doing more or less then they can take that information and work with it and say hey you know you you only did seven today you're underperforming on your gas passing (laughs) or or if you're doing like it's like six 16 what did you do did you go over to the lobster place or uh, did you get yourself a a whole tub of beans a lifetime supply of beans or something what's up with that so but it's actually a good idea a lot of i I was reading a couple people they're going this doesn't make much sense but you know if somebody has some gastrointestinal problems these these things are going to be the detectors. Like for instance, I do have a friend, and yes, I do have a friend, um, and he uh, actually uh, about two months ago he he stopped passing gas or going to the bathroom altogether, and he was very constipated. And the doctors uh, they didn't uh, they they took him to the doctor and they said, well, we'll just uh, there's probably blockage in there. So they went in and uh, they found out that he had a very rare version of cancer called Sans cancer. So uh, now he's getting all the treatment to uh, survive. He's actually at that two-month point where they said that's that's as long as you're going to have to live. So he's past that. So that's good for that. Uh, but you know that's the important things. If 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 you don't fart, then that can that can actually be a problem. So just remember that. And so that's that's why this is important. That's why I something like this. I'm very adamant about. Now this probably is not going to get funded. Unfortunately, it's got seven days to go. They're looking for $180,000. They only got 2700 which I can kind of understand why, because the device, all the device do, does is it hears if you've passed gas and then turns around and records that on the iPhone. Um, and it doesn't, you know, doesn't break down what the gas came out of your 
end there or anything like that. Um, so, you know, 180,000 might be a little bit too much for this device. Maybe in the future, if they, it starts detecting and saying, okay, there's a little bit of methane in here, a little bit of chocolate, I don't know, then, uh, <laughs> then, uh, then, then that, I could see that being $180,000. So um, would, you wear, would you wear a device like that on your back end? And your, it kind of looks like a pager. So, you know, yeah. most of us who wore pagers in the past would, would be used to something like that. Yeah, I guess it's like I would question how accurate it's going to be um, like if it's a sensor like that. I I don't know. Is it detecting sound or vibration? I guess I was trying to figure out what the what the sensor mechanism was because they show like a sensor, but it's like this very like rudimentary sensor. There's not much to it. So yeah. maybe some of the circuitry is on the other side, but I would just wonder like how accurate is it? Yeah. Um, well, it's also it's also detecting how long and how powerful it is. Maybe I don't know because don't it, it's know. Uh, it does do it does pro say you know it, I think it does measure to say hey you know maybe you shouldn't maybe you should be eating more broccoli or stay away from the beans or, less, or yeah. I don't know just whatever yeah however that I mean, works, it's, so. you know it's an interesting form of uh, the health monitoring, um, but it seems like you could almost well. Like, I don't know. There's a little button on it. Is the button for, like, logging one yourself? Like, if you don't get the <laughs> alert, like, you're like, uh, apparently it did not detect that one. I'm going to click the button to... I think that's the... Uh, yeah, I think that's just the on button. Hmm. So when you I guess you're, I have uh, to watch the video. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, we don't have time to do yeah, things like watch yeah. videos. That's crazy. So. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't watch that ahead of time. Uh... I think it's an interesting aspect of the kind of health wearable that we've talked about. I mean, we've yeah. talked about posture ones. Uh, I think if you combine this with a posture detection, I think if you could, yeah, I guess I'd say it's, it's interesting. Um, I think that $120 it looks like is the base level to get one of the actual devices. Yeah. Definitely, definitely you know, not worth it. Uh, it by like the way, by the way, bucks, uh... you guys are, if you're watching the video, you're seeing the actual app that it, that you can download. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and the far, one on the, on the, on your right uh, says how many farts you've done. So, and uh, it, I'm guessing it's got a whole chart system and stuff like that. Cause you got to log in and yeah, you can have, yeah. you know, chart up and down how many farts you did a day or, or whatnot. Yeah. So what time is most common, you know? Man, the afternoon, just stay away from people, man. You'll just, like, after after you eat lunch, you got to watch out. But uh, it's it's interesting. I would think that, they're, that they should go after combining their technology with other devices, try to find some other wearables that it would work with so that you could... Because, oh, yeah, I 120 guess... bucks for something this specific seems a little much. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they did. They didn't, uh, uh, you know, just kind of put together a prototype and say, hey, you know, if you've got a pro something that, that works with this, maybe we can combine it together and go from there. Maybe uh, maybe that'll be on the next bat belt or something like that. You know, you've mm -hmm. got all the compartments, and then in the back you got your little CH4 to detect your farts. That's possible. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So... <laughs> Anyway, so that's so. If you want to go over that out, it, I don't think it's going to get funded, unfortunately. But that was the Kickstarter of the week that I was really, really impressed about. And it's it's a new sensor, it's a new idea. So any new ideas, I, I'm I'm all for, even if sometimes they're a little bit uh, out there into the world and go from yeah. there. So, all right, hey, well that brings us to the. Uh, well, let's 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 dial it down a second here. How 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 was your week there, Luke? Uh, we had to unfortunately, we had to cancel the show last week uh, because uh, Luke's house passed away. In a sense, yes, uh, we've been been moving, and uh, yeah, last week was just a couple of days after the move, and things were really high stress, and so uh, yeah, I apologize for for that. But um, yeah, these new digs are going to be real nice uh, now that we've. I gotten settled enough, and so uh, yeah, the last week the internet was going to be spotty probably as well. So it might have been, might have not worked out so well even if we had. But uh, yeah, yeah, things seem to be running fine now, and um, yeah, looking forward to it. 
Yeah, it, it, I knew I knew it was going to happen. I mean, I've moved many times. In fact, I helped a friend move last week uh, as well. So you know, when you when you get into a new place, it's just like everything is everywhere, and you just don't have time to do uh, to do a show like this. So it's not like this is not the end of the world if we don't do an episode, and some of the new stuff keeps a couple weeks, mm-hmm. and uh, and in all reality. Uh, the week off actually filled our show so it's it's yeah. all good so so go ahead and do it next time <laughs> yeah uh so yeah uh, it's been good uh i will also do a little shout out for uh today which is uh, as we're filming this uh, uh not necessarily as you're watching it but it's uh may 4th which is kind of a punny day right may the 4th be with you so uh last week um, I went down and shot some video footage uh, for a local news channel so they could put together some little YouTube videos. Uh, and so this one uh, that Jeff is showing here is of uh, one of my little cameos where uh, they did a little video about Jedi, and um, that's me uh, asking for the sports page. So uh, pretty funny. So just search on YouTube if you're interested yeah. for WFAA. And then Lazy Jedi. So WFAA is the channel that put it all together. And then uh, Lazy Jedi is the specific. And there's a whole lot of other Star Wars videos. So if you find the WFAA account, there's a lot on there. We'll have the link in the show notes. So don't worry about that too much. And then I brought in in my lightsaber for the occasion. So this is the lightsaber that I go trooping with along with the little green blade. It doesn't have the sound chip. I'm your sound chip. Woo, woo, woo. Turn it off now. Woo. You yeah. like that? Is that? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That was really good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, <laughs> so you got all moved in. You're, you're all good. You're now in the, uh, the craft pa- slash podcast room. Yeah, this is our podcast studio room. Uh, we've got this room specifically for doing uh, video podcast shows. So um, we'll be looking to get reimbursed for this expense. Uh I'll, I'll submit an expense report next week. Okay. I will give you, <laughs> let's see, it will be uh, 50% of 40% of 10% of 13% of 2% of 0% of 72% of 35% of what I make off this show. Uh, gross or net? Net. Aww. We'll definitely net. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess that's fair. Yeah, sounds definitely. like it's, it sounds pretty reasonable to me. Definitely, definitely. So, now, now you did say that uh, I do get uh, from time to time I do get wearables, and our mm-hmm. friend uh, Marco uh, has got his Apple Watch, by the way, and he's going to be on the show in the next couple of weeks here, uh, showing off some cool stuff that he's uh, doing 3D printing for. But I want to show you something that I actually got this last week um, from our friends uh, over at Sensor Glove, and it is well, of course, it is the Sensor Gloves. <laughs> Um, and you know, I haven't been golfing in a long time, so it, it just kind of, I put it on and it's just like, I gotta go golfing again. I gotta go golfing again. But what's cool about this glove is it's got sensors in the fingers. And of course we've got the sensor right here. And, uh, I think the battery's dead. So I got to get a new battery. Um, it turns on every now and then, but then it turns itself off right away. So I'll probably have to get a new battery for it. But basically what this is, is it talks about your grip pressure, um it talks about your finger pressure um so when you, if if you've never really taken a golf lesson then you most likely most people hold it wrong you know they hold their golf clubs like this or, or this um instead of holding it like the uh like the, the regular grip um so this this is supposed to help you learn and realize how you grip your club and stuff like that during a swing. So I'm going to be actually going to be taking this out to the golf course and slapping people all around with it um, and figuring out my, my golf swings. So it's a very nice, comfortable glove. Um, the sensors are kind of odd. You can, you can definitely feel the sensors on there. And then the back here is right on the uh, Velcro um, where the, uh, where the ball marker would be. I don't know if you've ever played golf there, Luke, or not, but uh, uh, usually a ball marker is there, so when you're putting, you can put that down. But I'll just have to use a dime or something like that. Oh, oh, I see. The A marker to put down on the exactly, yeah. turf or whatever to, uh, like on the green to see, oh, that's where my ball is. So you can... Yes. Nice. So that yes. you're saying that's a, like if they're making a true golf 
glove, they need to add that in there so that no, not really. I mean, well, it. let's see. This thing comes off, so I could probably use this as the marker. It's a little bit big, but you know that that's possible. Mm. Some gloves don't come with uh, with uh, markers or anything like that, so yeah. it's it's not a big deal. So, and of course, this is for technically technically a right-handed golfer, although golf is the game of opposites because what something a lot of people don't really realize we conditioned ourselves to play golf wrong the wrong way right-handed people should be playing golf with left hand what they call left-handed clubs so technically this should be on this hand and i should be swinging like this and you'd improve your game if you switched to left, what they call left-handed clubs, but what really is right-handed clubs. So, hmm. does that make sense? Mm, uh, I'm I get a little lost, but I, I basically uh, we're doing it wrong. We're doing it backwards. Everybody's yes. if you're right hand, like so when I when I have gone out to a um, a place to hit golf balls around, uh, they it's kind of like a driving range, but kind of gamified. Uh, like I hold it and I swing back to my right because I'm right-handed and mm -hmm. then swing down. But you're saying I'm actually like, that's wrong. I should be swinging back to my left. No, no, no. Okay. Your left hand in the game of golf, your right hand is power and your left hand is accurate. Because I'm yeah, right-handed? No, no, no. Your le right hand is, is accuracy and your left hand is, is power. Let me think about this. So but ba bottom line is that if you switched... If you switched playing golf the other way, mm -hmm. this way, that uh, you'd find more power in your swing, you'd find more accuracy in your swing, because mm. your body directs that way. But then some people talk about the left hemisphere, the right hemisphere of the brain, and that's mm. why we play golf. It, it's it's discombobulated. But uh, the bottom line is there's a lot of people that uh, that believe that we play golf the wrong hand. I, I'm not a golf expert, so you know, yeah. take it for whatever it's worth. If you if you slice uh, left-handed, you're probably going to slice right-handed anyway, or vice versa. So, is what it is. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> okay. I'm I'm putting you in some deep thought there, right? I I am definitely reconsidering. I'm like, well, I don't actually play golf well enough to, like. Where I couldn't just start over with like golfing the other way. So yeah, that's true. I may have to try that. Like I, yeah, I've I've only played very casually and never really yeah. on a on a on a golf course. I got Pup I got pie. that's my game. I got very big into golf around uh, well around uh, two thousand one. Uh, no, two thousand. I I was I I I got a apartment in a play uh, in the apartment they had two cool things one they had an indoor golf simulator and they also during the summers they had you could go out to one of the local golf courses and they had a season pro which would help you with your swing and my season the season pro in question was a guy by the name of jack stricker and you might not know jack but you definitely if you play golf you know steve stricker and that's uh it was his uncle and his uncles played golf with them, helped him with it. I don't know. I don't know the whole thing on on what their relationship is. He said that 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 they they've played many round of golf together, and they've worked on their swings together. So um, I don't know if he taught him or or whatnot, but I you know he taught me. And I always tell people if if you want to play golf, just go take five lessons, just to learn how to hit the ball right, and you'll enjoy the game a hundred times more than you ever did. And uh, and so I'm really happy that I took those lessons from him. I'd have, you know, getting out of the game, getting back in, I'd probably have to really, really think about those, what he taught me before. Yeah. But the bottom line is, if you are going to golf, go to a pro. It's going to cost you a little bit of money, but you get like four or five lessons and somebody that's actually correcting you and your swing's so much better, your golf game's so much better. And that that makes those five hundred dollar, eighteen hole golf courses much better. Just saying. Yeah. So, 
But what about that glove? That glove could also help, right? Oh, yeah. You know, it's going to tell you how you grip. So, you know, you'll find out if uh, by the 18th hole, if you've got a loose grip or if you've got a heavy grip, um, sometimes you have to lighten up on your grip for some of your swings um, and stuff like that. So it'll be interesting. Uh, I'm definitely going to take it on the course. i got to read the whole manual. Yes, yeah. I read the manual. Um, and uh, I'm going to find out a little bit more about it. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I'll definitely be doing a video over on Geekazine for that. So Very cool. All right. You want to go golfing? You know, I probably need to. Okay. Probably need to. When I come down to Dallas, we'll go golfing. How's that? We actually have a lot of golf courses here. Well, yeah, it's Dallas. There are a lot of rich people in Dallas, so. There are. Uh, one of my, one of my friends. This is not really related at all, but um, kind of a family friend. One of my wife's friends that now I guess is kind of friends with me. Um, she works. Uh, she works as a. Um, what do you call it? Driver, um, not not taxi driver. The show, not chauffeur. The ones who take your car when you park somewhere. What are they called? Valet. Valet. Yeah. So she does some valet work uh, on nights and weekends. Sometimes uh, she's been doing it for years, and she's worked at some of the expensive golf courses. And she's actually. Um, uh, worked uh there when uh george bush george w bush uh came to the golf course to to play so oh, the country cool. club so uh, she's got to meet him uh just you know just kind of real casually uh, as he was coming in so uh, cool it's, so it's like so i know that that yeah like there that's where they go to play golf is at some of the the, the places here so was that George Bush Senior or Junior? Junior. That one. That okay. one's Junior. Um, so they 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 threw back a few beers and and partied a little bit, right? Uh, probably. Uh. <laughs> I'm hoping so. That would be fun. Anyway, so <laughs> let's let's yeah. move on. Yeah, uh, no, we're unrelated. No, that's know. okay. You know, that's that's helpful. what this part is all about. It's <laughs> it's about well, this is about wearable tech, and the wearable tech in golf is gonna be like, you know. I remember growing up and I seeing all these little contraptions, bits and pieces. And yeah, I bought into a couple of them as I was growing up, learning on my golf swing and stuff like that. Um, but wearable technology, yeah, it's it's made for golf. It is so made for golf. So even the the fart detector thing is made for <laughs> golf. I'm just, I don't know why, but it is. It is. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. all right, but you know, hey, we are not rich people. We are not. We're really not. That's why we. Uh, that's why we help. You know, we want you to go over to wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. Uh, check out all the cool deals over on Amazon, so you can get yourself a wearable, maybe a Jawbone, maybe a Moto 360. They had some good prices on those. Um, I just got a new alert uh, this morning saying that they had uh, they had lowered the price on some other. Uh, wearables. So wearabletoday.com forward slash deals and that'll take you straight to the Amazon page. Uh, get yourself a wearable device and, and go from there. So, All right. And so that brings us to the next segment and that's Guess the Steps. And I don't know how we're, how we're going to do this, but uh, we basically last week we realized, hey, we both have devices that you know can tell us what we what we did for steps. So each week we're gonna we're gonna figure out how we're gonna do this little contest where you're gonna guess the steps, and then we're gonna combine how many steps that m myself and Luke had uh, ha had done for the week and put it together. So, like for instance, today I did 3,036 steps, um, and in this last week I've done 3,036 steps. That's pretty much it. Well, what about you, Luke? How many how many steps have you done? Uh, today, uh, 6,784 steps. Whoa. Yes, I work in a large office building, so it actually takes, uh, I, I walk around quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and I yeah. have a lot of meetings, so I have to cross the building several times. And... Yeah, and, and to me, my long journey is I get out of bed, I go like this. <clears throat> that's for my may the fourth and then i walk into the kitchen and i push the button for the coffee and then i wait for the coffee and then i grab my coffee cup and then i realize i didn't put it where the coffee is and i'll put it in the coffee and then i make another pot of coffee and i gotta clean up the mess 
Well, I leave Jen- Jennifer cleans up that mess. But then I walk to my office, which is on the other side of the bedroom. Uh, well, <laughs> the other room. Uh, so I walk out the bedroom and into the office, and that's that's my steps. I mean, that's a total of thirty. <laughs> if, yeah. If yeah. I really push it, might have to go to the bathroom once. You know, a couple steps there. So. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, no, I did actually, and, and of course today I, I I went. You know, it was a nice day. Yesterday, I actually had to mow the lawn for the first time uh, this summer. So I, I, I mowed. Well, thank you very much. And so it was a really nice day today. So I, I just said, well, I'll take the walk around the, na- the neighborhood like I normally do during the summer. So yeah. my first walk, that's where I got 3,000 steps from. So Very cool. Very cool. Oh, thank you. Thank you. How many steps did Birdie take, by the way? Not as many. Not yeah. as many. <laughs> probably, probably a few hundred walking around her cage and... Doing things here and there, so probably, probably a few hundred. Yeah, Bertie, you think so? Yeah, yeah Bertie, you're slacking. Yeah, but we, but she's in a cage most of the day, so you know it's hard to walk around too much. But. That's true. That's true. So, all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Other than that, uh, you know, next week we'll we'll we'll, we'll have you. Do we want to do for the day or do we want to do for the week? Ooh. For the for the week, I think will be a much bigger number. Yeah. Um, Let's but it also takes a little, like I I don't know if there's a quick way to see that. I can definitely add up the last. I can add up everything since last Tuesday and give you a number. Um, yeah. Let's let's just do it for the day then. Okay. That so way we'll we can see, slack like, the rest of the week. And then just uh, take a bunch of steps on Monday and yeah. call it and call it good. And it's like, oh yeah, I, I walked a lot. Look at that, fifty-five thousand steps. <laughs> like really? <laughs> You'd be pretty much walking nonstop all day to, hit, yeah. to do that, I think. But. Well, two two was it two years ago? I think it was. I did uh, ten thousand step challenge, which was uh, oh. you know I walked ten thousand steps a day for the whole month of May, with the exception of the oh, days wow. that the the show uh, when I had a show, and the band plays because I. I I send out more calories than uh, playing drums than I you know I I could I think it's like thirty or forty thousand steps, <laughs> so yeah. but other than that you know ten thousand steps a day that was a, it was a, it was good. a good challenge so that, I should a, do it again that's a really good amount yeah because so. think of it this way it's now it's what May the fourth mm-hmm. when we're recording it you're probably watching it on May the fifth the reality is next thing you know it's October and then you're going oh. I didn't walk. I didn't walk. I didn't do that. So just just remember, summer goes by so fast. Winter's there. It's like forever. And the summer comes out. It's like, here it is. Oh, it's October already. <sighs> so. Yeah. 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 Very cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah. that's that's that. And, of course, remember uh, wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. Also, if you go over to the YouTube page, please, uh, we got the card up there. Uh, please uh, please donate. Uh, $5, $10 helps us keep the lights on, keeps the show running, and lets us know that you care to send us $5. So, anyway, that's over at YouTube. Thank you very much for that, and go from there. All right, let's move on. Let's get into our main focus of the day, and that's basically uh, Google Glass 3.0. Let's, let's pull out the old glass here. This is now antique glass. I feel like an antique, you know, let's put the glove. I feel like an antique data. Welcome. This is a Google Glass version 2.1. And mm, I will price it at about, oh, I don't know, about uh, $30. Because it's got a scratch right there. That's it. No more. No? Okay. (laughs) I don't think so. I don't think so. What do you mean? Have you seen? There's a lot of people that are selling their Google Glass, and they're they're doing it cheap. No, I, haven't, like, I haven't checked. That'd be interesting. Yeah. So it's uh, not thirty dollars cheap. Don't get you know. It's yeah, more yeah, like yeah. Eight hundred, yeah, nine hundred dollars. But uh, it's a uh, it's it's not. Uh, every time I see that, I just go, "Wow!" It's like, oh man. So I, you know, because you know, we 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 put a lot. We invested a lot in Google Glass, and for that to go. Uh, kind of belly up, it's what four or five months ago. Yeah, that's just it. Kind of hurt. It kind of hurt. So it looks but like course, about five hundred dollars. It looks like four fifty, five hundred dollars, something like that. It's pretty. Yeah. Pretty typical. Yeah. So now, now everybody, you know, Eric Schmidt's going. Hey, you know, Google Glass isn't dead. You know, they got Project X going on. And Ivy Ross is still in there, and uh, 
and you know google glass is not dead not dead not dead uh but it kind of is dead because we still believe it's not going to be run off the google glass software we i uh, and well i can't really speak for luke but i'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing an android wear version of google glass come the next version yeah. right that's that's what that's what i know you and i have both kind of been guessing just based on what they've added to android wear and what glass could do like it's pretty like they've almost gotten to to be where you can do everything you could do on glass you can now do on android wear um, it's getting really, really close. Uh, there's even stuff that Android Wear can do that Glass cannot, and so uh, it's getting, it's getting like, why would they make Glass at, at this point? Like, all they need to do is add in picture functionality to an Android Wear device. Yeah, and then that's basically everything that people would want to do with, um, with like that's everything you could do with Glass before. Yeah, uh, maybe some audio playback because Android Wear devices don't have speakers but they do have bluetooth audio for playing music so i get like it's it yeah that's the thing is like it, it, there's almost no point in glass being a separate platform at this point it's really exactly exactly it, it really should just be like part of android wear or just an android wear device and i have a feeling that like yeah either it'll be either they'll call it google glass version 2 or whatever version they'll call it um even though technically, you know, the hardware's version three or four by this this point, yeah. but um, it, they may not even call it Google Glass or it may be something else. I mean, they've done that before where hardware, uh, they, they called it like Android at home. They, they announced that at Google I.O. like three years ago. And they're like, yeah, we're doing this big Android at home thing with speakers and stuff. And then the next year they... they didn't mention that at all, like for the next year. And then they released the Nexus Q and it basically did everything that they showed the previous year with Android at home, but they never mentioned that. And then they killed off the Q, and then they released the Chromecast, which basically did everything that people wanted from the Q without costing $300. Yeah. And so it was like, they do this all the time where they kind of like, they put something out and they're like, no, no, this is totally what we're doing. And then a year later, it's like, uh, what? What are you talking about? Oh, we have this other thing though that if you if you ever went back and compared it's the exact same feature set but we're just never going to mention it that it was android at home and then it was q and now it's chromecast yeah. and android tv and it's like no 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 chromecast that's all it's ever been like well it's pretty much these other things and you just kind of said that they didn't they refined it they just refined the ideas so much and they said well we don't even need to do the android at home thing like no one's going to use that so let's let's just make chromecast and we'll be done so yeah Actually, they made like, Nexus too, or Nexus. So Nexus like player. they yeah, so they did like the Nexus Player, which was you know Android TV, which replaced Google TV, which was kind of the same thing. Oh yeah, Google TV, it'll be here forever. And then a couple years later, what? Oh no, we have this Android TV. That's what you're thinking of, Android TV. It's like, uh, so what happened to Google TV? Google, huh? Google what? No, we <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have Google just like, TV what? What? No, no, no idea what That's you're crazy. talking about. No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> what? And. So, like, Google does that all the time. They'll be like, they'll release something. They'll say, here's this cool Android device that you wear on your face. And people will say, hey, that's Google Glass, right? And they'll be like, no, it's this new thing, Android Wear for faces. An yeah. Face, Android Glass, Android Wear Glass. Like, so. Well, at any rate, I mean, uh, so uh, the whole the whole point <laughs> being that uh, Google Glass, uh, this this article, uh, this is one of the articles that I, we get bombarded with on a daily basis now uh, from, uh, I can't remember the name of this, come, chart, chart, it really doesn't matter. Um, they're calling it Google Glass 2.0. Cheat sheet. But I, cheat sheet? Yeah, that's it. Uh, and, but, you know, there has been an official word that says it's technically going to be Google Glass 3.0. Um, and I think that came from Eric Schmidt or, or whatnot. Uh, we also know that Luxottica has been becoming very uh, vocal uh, about how about their involvement into Google Glass, and so they uh, they will be they, they've been they've been talking about that. Uh, Tony Fidel, who uh, joined Google, um, is going to be working on uh, the new Explorer program and go from there so and they're calling it an explorer program so th the question is are we still are you and i still explorers with our google glass will we get a new google glass what are you doing luke am i 
am I exploring still? Yeah. Am I an explorer? I don't. Yeah. I'm, am I exploring here? Yeah. It's like it's like they're they're gonna come out of uh, nowhere and just be like, "You're all still explorers." Like you kind of wonder because they they did send out that email saying, "Thank you for being part of the explorer program. Glass has been great. Here's a book. Uh, see ya." <laughs> and <laughs> you're like, "Uh, so are we done here?" Because that was a really anticlimactic ending to get a book with some pictures that people took with glass and. Yeah, and there they made it. They made it sound like there's going to be more than one book too. So yeah, volume zero zero one. You're like, okay, so is there more? Is exactly. There, like, is there? Are we still part of the program? Because we're going to get volume two. Is it time life where we get volume one for free, but then volume two was <laughs> only thirty nine ninety five a month for twelve pay, easy payments? I, I don't really. I'm confused. That's that's a darn good question. Hi, are you ready for the Time Life Google Glass collection? <laughs> One of those cheesy '80s commercials. Yeah, where's, where's like... the uh, where's the Encyclopedia Britannica kid when you need him? Yeah, that would be yeah. cool. You get one volume each month. You know, wow! With, it'll start back in the 1900s and then it'll go send to it the back 1920s. at any time because yeah, you know. Yeah, cancel at any time. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I'm I'm trying to pull up. Yeah, I got the wrong mouse here. There we go. I'm trying to pull up the uh, Glass Explorers because there's an actual Google community for Glass Explorers, and this is it. And uh, there's a lot of it's very still very active. Um, some people selling their Google Glass. Some people actually still taking a lot of pictures and video with Google Glass. Um, so there are a lot of people that still wear their glass. And I would, I would really be one of those people that wears gla Google Glass if I didn't feel like this pair of Google Glass is going to break the second I sweat on it. And uh, yeah, if that, ha that happens, then I don't have a pair of Google Glass anymore. That's a problem. So I, you know, I, I try and keep my Google Glass on the hook, charged up, ready at a moment's notice. I'm going to put it back there. It's, it's you know, I should have like a little plastic case and, and a little feather duster and stuff. I keep my Google Glass nice and prepped. So, but, uh, so anyway, new Google Glass 3.0. You know, they're, they're saying it's going to be coming out and a lot of people are saying, hey, you know, it's going to have, we think it's going to have this, we think it's going to have this. And a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of stuff is obvious. I mean, it's obvious that they want a better battery inside of google glass that's that's just that's yeah you don't need to be a rocket brain surgeon to the, to do that so um some other things uh lower price better design um and uh, and go from there but I, there's there's a lot of things that you know i've been i've been coming through and and there's probably some stuff that you want you want to see on the next version of google glass and uh, and I think it's very important that some of this stuff is on there. Um, so let's just go down the list really quick. Yeah. One lower price. Uh, we don't need to talk too much about that, right? Yeah. Fifteen hundred dollars was pretty crazy, especially with Android Wear devices uh, being more in the two hundred to three hundred dollar range typically. I mean, the Tog Heuer was is fourteen hundred dollars like that's a really expensive watch even the apple watch the normal prices are 350 for the cheap one you know seven eight hundred is yeah. not too far off with the middle of the road and a and a band but 1500 is an awful lot so yeah, yeah. i think that's pretty obvious they got to come down yeah definitely 600 I, i'd say 600 dollars, and that includes a a, a pair of glasses with that, mm -hmm. not not a uh, 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 ribbon that you put over your head with Google Glass on it. So you got to be a pair of glasses like yours, sunglasses, prescription glasses, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's still got to be a set of regular frames on there. So, uh, which goes to our next one, better design. Uh, the better design, uh, once again, it's got to be look like more like a pair of glasses instead of like this band across with a uh, with a with a device on it. I mean, that was great. Yeah. That you know, this was this was great two years ago, but now it's two years later, and we don't want that stuff. So, um, and yeah, I mean, it's been it will be two years in next month. You've you've had yours for two years officially, and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll be two years next month for me on mine. So, so uh, th th as if for design, um, 
the one question for you is would you want to see battery on both sides or you know kind of even out the weight distribution i think so i think that would be an easy way to uh increase the battery life if yeah. it's something that is going to have that band to it or at least some sort of optional way like to hook it in to allow that extra battery on that side to even it out um because yeah i think that i mean that would basically double your battery life and all of a sudden it becomes a lot more useful so exactly yeah i think i think the design's pretty critical there yeah um for me the design like i said I make it look like a, a pair of glasses that i'd want to buy in a, uh, in the store and stuff like that uh and speaking on with we got to have some sort of detachability to it whether it be just the optic that gets detached or the whole unit that gets detached because now we're talking about these being regular people's glasses and there are people that don't want them to be wearing those glasses uh the google glass while they walk in to wherever they are a theater um uh at a private showing of something i know when i go out to ces and stuff like that i go into rooms all the time where i can't take pictures or audio or anything like that that i can i can look at the stuff i can talk about the stuff but i cannot bring back a visual or audio on that and and so you know for a lot of people they probably don't have that same problem but there's going to be you know restaurants that don't want to have google glass on and stuff like that so uh, the ability to actually detach it from your glasses i think it's very very important so next up adjustability um mm -hmm. you know i the reason why uh, the reason why we were told that these glasses did not have hinges on them was because they didn't want us to take them off and that's a great little thing i mean if you don't can't fold it up you can't put it in your pocket i mean i could do this if i wanted to mm -hmm. but it still gets in the way i'd always end up putting them over my head like this but uh if i didn't want them in, in or, or some people would you know like regular glasses put them up like this but they they just have to fold up they just have to be able yeah. to you put them into a case that you can put them into your pocket when you don't use them and go from there and i think that's very important uh for a pair of google glass uh to do because it's you know the epson moverios can fold up um the Vuzix, uh they're detachable so you just put them in the case like that and go from there so i also think that you're talking about adjustability so on my normal glasses uh you could see this this bar here that comes down and then where it goes over the ear like where that actually bends and goes over your ear is, yep. is a little more adjustable whereas on google glass it's not it's really not and so um i think there's a comfort issue there as far as um, how it fits and so i think either moving the battery somewhere else or just making it so that you can adjust that a little bit um, that's where i would find the most discomfort is on the kind of back of the ear or, or top of the ear yeah. where the glasses would go and um, that would cause that would cause the most discomfort yeah especially um, when birdie starts biting you yeah exactly i start going like this and birdie's like what are you doing what are you doing? <laughs> but, um, so adjustability then, yeah. somebody's calling me um Sorry about that. Uh, so next one uh, that we go from there uh, is it, it's, it's uh, well we talked about longer battery life. It's really it's really what they can do. It's, they can't do much about that. Um, but uh, the there are two things that they can do, and uh, one is how you charge the device, and two there is there is a thing called kinetic charging, and I think that's what, kinetic charging. Yeah. Uh, so basically, there's like a, there's a system with little weights in it or something like that, and, and every time it moves, it shakes and causes and creates more power. Um, and you can put that into a device. Um, within the next five years, we're going to have kinetic power in our phones. So when I sh I can do this a few times, and I could probably get another percent on my phone. And uh, that type of charging would work perfect in glass because you're moving and, and it's meant to, yeah. and you're not sitting around, you're, you're moving around. So that'll help charge it up and go from there. But the other thing is the cheap power, being able to just set it onto a dock, let it charge itself or, or uh, get it close to something and, and, and charge while you're on the go. So you can, so you don't have those power issues 
and you can keep going a little bit longer. Yeah, totally agree. I think wireless charging would also get rid of one of the ports on it so you wouldn't have to have another spot for dirt and dust and water to get into. So it would help seal it up a little better exactly. uh, as well. So I think there's multiple benefits to that. But yeah, wireless charging seems to be the way things are going. And uh, it, it makes a lot of sense for something like glasses that you want to just be able to take off and set down and not have to fiddle with. Because especially if you have prescription glasses, you take your glasses off. Now you have to try to plug something in like well, now I can't see as well now. So yeah. how am I supposed to plug in when I can't see as well? You know, like it'd just be nice if it uh, was wireless. I don't, I don't know if they can get the charging circuits that small, but uh, I think they definitely should try uh, maybe yeah. with some sort of, or even maybe not wireless if they couldn't do it, but with some sort of simple contacts where, you know, you set it down in a dock and then the little uh, pogo pins kind of, push up against the contacts and then charge that way. So you don't have to line up a connector basically, or, or a mag safe type connection where magnets align the little connector so that. Uh, yeah. But a mag safe to... might be the better option simply because of the fact that you can get it that small mm -hmm. and then it would be, just be important if, if, if it can also be waterproof Yeah. because the, if you splash water on it, it's not, it's, it's not hitting the connectors and, and, uh, and going from there. Cause there's no, there's no magnetic uh, attractions for the power to push through. So that might be an option too. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the power issue is the power issue. Maybe they'll put mm. a little solar panel along the front. Or <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, we're, when it comes to any device, that's, that's the big multi-billion dollar question is how mm -hmm. do I keep it charged 24-7? It's just not going to happen. So, But these yeah. are some things that they need to uh, think about. The next thing is... Uh, added security features. Now, when the first iPhone came out, uh, a lot of companies couldn't use the first iPhone simply because of the fact that there was no enterprise level security on that. Uh, but I think it was uh, iPhone 4 that came out with, uh, with the right iOS that could take a phone, connect it to, uh, more securely into somebody's environment so they could use the device. And it still don't think it's as, as secure as like a Blackberry, believe it or not. But you can enterprise companies can still use iPhones now. Same thing with Google Glass. A lot of hospitals want to use uh, the next version of Google Glass. You know, we we talked about Virgin Airlines doing uh, doing that. Uh, we talked about oil change places wanting Google Glass and uh, and using them to detect what they need to do and stuff like that. In order for that stuff to happen, it needs to be set up so it will. It will uh, connect with their systems and nothing else. It won't go out to the internet. They can't search anything on it. It's just all about that company. And if they have more security options, especially unlocking options, then uh, a lot of companies will buy that up in a heartbeat and use it for front desk people, for anybody that needs to pull up information on a moment's notice sales people will use it uh airline stewardesses could use it uh whatever everybody can use it yeah no i yeah very important i think security with wearables is an uh especially with all the information uh you know apple tried to or has tried to address that with their apple watch by um it's got a neat feature, so some people at work got them, and I was able to uh, play with them just a little bit. Uh, it has a neat security feature where you have to put in your PIN code to unlock it, but until it comes off your wrist, you don't have to put in that PIN code again. Mm -hmm. But once you take it off, it detects, oh, you have been removed from someone's wrist. You're no longer in contact with it. Okay, I'm going to lock down the next time anybody tries to do anything with it. Uh, Google Glass didn't really have that. They did add in some security measures that you yeah. could do with swipes and stuff. Uh, but I don't know if it was quite robust enough for people to um, depend on it, like, you, you know, and, and uh, be able to use it in enterprise level stuff. So exactly. it's kind of a neat, um, kind of a neat uh, idea. Uh, and definitely, yeah, something they need to think about going forward more. Uh, but if they go with Android Wear, in theory, that, that any any changes that are made there would also apply to glass. So. Yeah. 
I like your idea. I think I think that's what the, the your, you were throwing the idea of kind of like a key fob type thing. Mm-hmm. If the key fob's close to the car, the car starts. If it's not, if the car shuts off. Um, and in this case, if the phone that's paired with the Google Glass in a secure pairing, not just a you know regular Bluetooth connection, mm-hmm. um, if the phone is in proximity and the glass is on. And maybe even some sort of the optics is checking out your eye and, and can read your eye because this this version of Google Glass could do some eye um, checking. I don't know how how well it does it, but the whole point is that if it does that and and, and identifies you, poop. There's there's a better level of security right there. So uh, that would be uh, those are some things that we could see. Uh, that working so enterprise level companies because really in all if if Google Glass does want to sell it let's say they're selling the the next version at a thousand dollars a pair you and I would not buy it but hotels would buy it restaurants mm-hmm. would buy it um, Virgin Atlantic would buy it and they, they do it without a hesitation it's like okay let's do it it's got the security we're good to go let's yeah. let's go for it so all right uh, next one uh, better connection options. Uh, we've got the we've got the small was it the mini USB? Is it mini or micro? Uh, micro. Micro, micro USB. Okay, uh, which is great. And it, and the micro USB did charging and it did the earphone, but we need to have something with more connection to it, kind of like with Apple and their one port to hook up whatever you want to. So if uh, we could if we needed a joystick or a, a button to press or something like that on our Google Glass, once again, going back to Enterprise, because they might want more, something more than just a touchpad on the side, being able to connect up and go from there. I think that would be very important. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, that USB, uh, U- USB Type-C is the uh, standard that Apple has adopted. It's also on the new Chromebook Pixel, and it's actually on one of the Nokia tablets that's been out for a little while uh, uses that same connector. I think we're going to see that connector a lot more. So yeah, yeah it's reversible. Uh, yeah. So I think I think something like that would be better. Um, would be better than the standard micro that they're using now. Although, like we talked about a little earlier, maybe a wireless option or some something that doesn't really even require a connector. You know, a port on the device just to keep it more. Yeah. Uh, um, self-contained and, you know, uh, waterproof and stuff would be nice, but, uh, yeah, you know, e- either, or, you know, it would be better. Well, see, that's the thing is you can make, uh, you can make, a, a waterproof connector area. And in all reality, a lot of the phones that say that they're waterproof are simply just these little doors that you close in on the, uh, on the connector so they don't yeah. get wet. So if, if, if you think about it, you could actually easily apply that to even this pair of Google glass and sure. make it better. So, um, even Somebody though he makes those, even and except I think there's other places that water got through because yeah, I think yeah. that power button or something. Yeah, power button definitely. So, um, all right, next one, graphic interface. I see this a lot. A lot of people, you know, coming up to the OK glass, that was good, but it's just you know, it's like watching a game of Pong nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know, would you want to watch Pong or Call of Duty? Yeah. Simple as that. Um, they need they need to have it more graphic. Uh, you know, like the a- Apple Watch, you have all those little things and the ability. So you know, if I want to direct myself to a uh, to a, a bit there, I okay. There's there's the the icon I want. I just blink and poof, I can open it up, or something like that. Or tap and, or, and open it up and go from there. So uh, a little bit more graphics on there. I know why they did it with this version because you know, they they were working up to it. And uh, but yeah, definitely need a little bit more oomph in the graphics. Mm-hmm. Agreed. All right. Uh, next up, right-handed versus right-handed versus left-handed. Simple as that. You know, uh, there. Uh, I had a friend. I, uh, I was. You want to. You want to try these out, don't you? And he goes. Yeah, I wish I could, but I'm blind in this eye, and I'm going. I had no idea. He goes, yeah, no, most people don't know that. So um, some people have vision problems where their left eye is not, the, or the right eye was not the, the best eye for that. So left eye version, it just it just makes sense in this case, right? Yeah, I think that it has to be either reversible or they have to have different options uh, available. Like maybe it's not a huge 
number of those. It's not like they need to carry them in equal, you know, equal uh, numbers. Yeah. It's kind of like left-handed scissors, right? Like they don't actually sell those everywhere or they don't have as many of those as they have right-handed scissors in most yeah. places, but it needs to be there. You need to have that option. You can't just ignore people, like you said, that have something wrong with their right eye or they're blind in their right eye or whatever. Like you can't just say, well, it's just really for people who can use the right eye. Yeah. Like that's, that's not really very inclusive. Or if it is detachable, have a way so it can detach off one side, move over to the yeah. other side and switch sides. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Would, would we want to have both on, on, on something where you have optics on both sides? Maybe. I mean, I know that's what uh, the Muverio does. That's what the HoloLens does. Uh, they have these, you know, dual eye stereoscopic overlay type things. Okay. And then speaking of optics, uh, the last one, and one of the things that, that a lot of people, uh, uh, for some reason, uh, nobody really, only a few people really talk about, and that's the uh, possible larger optic. Um, the size of that optic was is is pretty good but and of course they don't want to make it too big because then it blocks the eye but something just a little bit bigger that still stays above the eye range uh, eye vision uh, field of vision range um, a lot of people would be able to see a little bit better and going from there um, and speaking of which uh, with those optics uh, option to focus them better because once again you know some people are nearsighted some people are farsighted and, and this farsighted people had problems looking at Google Glass. If they can adjust the optics, they could actually make it, um, they could they could focus it into their, uh, to their prescription, and they'd be able to see it a little bit better and go from there, so. <laughs> yes. But I think Bertie's agreeing with me on those focus yeah, options. Yeah, I, I think Bertie's yeah. very upset that there aren't more focus options because uh, some people have eagle eyes and they can see very well, but mostly at distance, and so. Uh, yeah, I think I definitely think it's important to make it more adjustable uh, uh, in lots of ways, like you said, size and focus, uh, providing that providing that kind of option. Because um, yeah, I mean, I did not see glass truly uh, clearly until I was able to get the prescription version. Yeah. Now my eyes are not so bad that I wasn't able to read it somewhat, but I like it was always a little blurry. Uh, now I could read the text and it was okay, but it wasn't crystal clear until I got those prescription versions of it. And yeah. so uh, I wonder, is it possible that I wouldn't have needed to do that, that I could have just adjusted it and been able to uh, use it without having to get a prescription, but um, don't know, but it would yeah. be, it would be nice if they supported that. It definitely. And, and uh, I'm, I'm seeing these commercials on TV now where, these people came out with these reading glasses that do adjust. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you one one pair works for everybody type thing. Um, and being able to do that with Google Glass, it just makes more sense. Mm -hmm. um, that way they also don't go and get into prescription Google Glass. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe prescription lens with Google Glass, but not, you know, that. And then, of course, you know, like five years down the road, well, you probably won't have it five years down the road. You'll probably have an updated version. But, you know, as your eyesight changes then yeah. you can change with it and go from there. So I, I think yeah. that this is, this, is, this is the solid list of the things that we need to see with Google Glass 3.0 or 4.0 within the next five years to really make it a viable Google Glass. Is there anything on this list or anything missing on this list that you would want to add there, Luke? The only thing that I can think of that uh, we kind of are alluding to in these last couple of points is maybe it should be something that can be attached to a pair of glasses that you have as opposed to requiring a special set of frames. So there could be like that kind of band option if you want to use it and you don't need glasses. But yeah. if you already have glasses, it's like, why can't I just have something that hooks onto my standard glasses and... I, you know, and use because then they those. can't get people like Luxottica to make frames for them and stuff like that. So, yeah, you're and, right. You're it would be nice and and go from there. But uh, well, you'll probably end up getting frames for it. My my thing is you shouldn't have to get frames for it. And then all of a sudden Google Glass dies, and then you you can't even wear the glasses be, unless that Google Glass attachment is on there. Yeah, 
Um, now that is that is kind of significant. Uh, that would yeah. be something that I would like. Is yeah, I mean, we talked about how it's detachable. Um, so maybe that's maybe that's kind of where that fit that fits in is well, they need to make glasses that support Google Glass or whatever it's called uh, next time, but also be able to just have them um, on their own. Like yeah. be able to take the glass Google Glass off and be able to wear them as normal glasses that don't look real funny. And, yeah. yeah. And, and especially with those people, you know, once again, we get back to the enterprise uh, and we get back to the people, you know, uh, it, if if uh, a warehouse full of Google Glass is out there, um, they're probably going to be safety glasses that they're wearing that have Google Glass on it. But you definitely don't want, you know, it, this. If, if I'm wearing Google Glass, I'm in a warehouse, I usually will take them off. They get charged for a couple hours and then somebody else will pick them up and wear them to do that and, and that's 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 the key right there is you got to have something that's functional where if I take it off and somebody else puts it on they'll be able to get that they won't have to sit there and, and adjusting and go from there and then when I put them back on uh, I won't have to make the adjustments as well so but uh, that's that's the list and I think that I think if they focus on this type of stuff some of it, yeah, it's a little bit off in the distance, like kinetic charging and, and chi power and stuff like that. But if they focus on this, on this basic list right here, Google Glass will become more productive, Google Glass will become more accepted, and Google Glass will just be something that, you know, you buy. You know, you buy your phone, you buy your watch, you buy your glass, and it's as simple as that. So, all right. Well, I think we've pretty much uh, killed that horse with a dead horse. Or something like that. What? I, 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 used to, I don't think I used that's to call the right it, yeah. way to say we, that. We, we beat that dead horse with a dead horse. That's what I always used to say. Uh, so, uh. so anyway, we, if you've got some ideas, what do you think should be on Google Glass? Is there anything we need to add to the list? Let us know. Uh, of course, uh, you can find me at Geekazine. That's my Twitter handle. Or Geekazine at gmail.com. Think magazine. Put in a geek. And you can go over to Geekazine and check that out. Or Jeff at wearabletoday.com. And, of course, with Luke... You can find me on Twitter at Luke Luca, or you can email me at Luke at wearabletoday.com or Bertie at wearabletoday.com. I'll pass the emails along to Bertie. Uh, or you can find me on Google Plus at google.com slash plus Luke Wallace. Plus. Plus. Anyway. All right. Well, thanks, thanks, Luke, for uh, coming on to another, another great show um, from the new second floor. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you're on the second floor or not. I'm but, not you know. on the second floor. This is actually on the first floor. But you may have heard of me before. <laughs> I will bring that. We bring that. anyway. So, <laughs> thanks a lot for watching. Uh, thanks a lot for listening. Here's uh, we got some show notes. Uh, of course, next week we will have a show. Um, we'll have a show for a cup. Uh, I think yeah. Next week we'll definitely have a show. Two weeks from now, uh, there's there's some question in that, so stay tuned um, because we're coming up with a major holiday, and then of course we've got some major travel. I know I'm going to be gone the first week of June, um, and possibly the second week of June as well. So depending on uh, the events that are happening, but uh, uh, just keep on on check the schedule, and, and we'll let you know uh, when there's shows and stuff like that and go from there. So, all right. Well, thank you very much, Luke, for your time. Thanks, Bertie, for your time as well. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. It's uh, great to be back on and, uh, looking forward to next week's show. All right. There you go. And of course, uh, you want to check out the previous shows, go over to wearabletoday.com, wearabletoday.com, and you can check that out all over there. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. We'll be back next week with another episode of wearable today. And until then you guys geek out, Go golfing and uh, get yourself some Google Glass or something like that. So, thanks a lot. Take care.